Almost every ancient culture claimed that their gods came from the sky. Did they really originate from sky? Were they really sky people? Where did they live and how they became celestial entities? Let us dig the true origin of ancient gods. The ancient Egyptian historian Manetho has provided us very interesting details about the divine rulers of the ancient Egypt. According to Wikipedia, Manetho is believed to have been a Greco-Egyptian priest from Sibinitos who lived in the Ptolemaic kingdom in the early 3rd century BC during the Hellenistic period. He authored the history of the ancient Egypt, Egyptiaca, in Greek language. That is a major chronological source for the reigns of the pharaohs of ancient Egypt. According to him, the ancient gods of Egypt were divided into seven sections having their own field of rule. But a few gods had enormous capability to do numerous different tasks as Manitho wrote for example that, according to the stela coming from the gods of the first real dynasty, more than 20,000 works were attributed to god Thoth, that is also known as Tahuti and Hermes. He also reported that these same gods ruled on planet Earth from 33,894 to 23,642 BC. He tells us about Horus, Anubis, Thoth, Ta, Orisis and Ra and claims that these gods in fact originated from planet Earth and then became celestial and associated with the stars as they reached heaven. Perhaps that's why in ancient cultures their gods were believed to come from the heavens. According to authentic Islamic narrations, Satan was from the Jinn nation and other Abrahamic religions also support that Satan's relation to planet earth before going to heavens with angels to become a celestial entity. What if the ancient Egyptian gods were not ancient aliens or ancient astronauts but they were actually Satan's progeny survived in the Great Deluge. Greek biographer Plutarch wrote a very knowledgeable work on the cult of Isis and Orisis. He writes, Ra departed to the heavens and Orisis became pharaoh of Egypt with Isis and they built Thebes, that is now known as Luxor. Graham Hancock writes in his best-selling book Fingerprints of the Gods, Citing Manetho directly, historian of Christianity, Eusebius begins with drilling of a list of gods which consists essentially of the familiar Enid of Heliopolis, Ra, Orisis, Isis, Horus, Seth and so on. These were the first to hold sway in Egypt. Thereafter, the kingship passed from one to another in unbroken succession. Through 13,900 years, after the gods, demigods ruled for 1,255 years and again another line of the kings held sway for 1,817 years. Then came 30 more kings reigning from 1,790 years and then again 10 kings ruling for 350 years. Then the rule of the spirits of the dead for 5,813 years. The total of all these periods adds up to 24,925 years and takes us far beyond the biblical date for the creation of the world that is sometime in the 5th millennium BC. Who was this god Ra? Why did Ra depart to the heavens? How he knew to enter in heavens? Did he know the portal or the gates of the heaven? Does it tell us about a time before the creation of human being, an epoch when Satan was their chief commander as Azazel and they were working under him to maintain peace on the planet earth. But they were also able to go to heavens to have certain orders or assignments. Here a question arises that on whom these celestial gods ruled all planet earth for thousands of years before the creation of human being. Did they rule on the Jinn nation on the planet Earth that was their own nation and was created far before human being and they ruled on the early creature like Hin and Bin and other spirit creatures? 
then human is created and after being cursed and suspended from the heavens these genie gods with their supreme commander satan came to earth and chose egypt his ruling hub and when humans flourished in planet earth including egypt then they manipulated genes of egyptian nation by mating with their males and females to create a hybrid race not only having the wisdom of human and the enormous vigor and power of the jinn but also having utter loyalty for satan and his evil council of genie gods these human jinn hybrids were called demigods who also ruled on egypt for thousands of years these gods and demigods ruled on planet earth till great deluge when the human race became badly corrupted by having the jinn's evil genes in body god decided to end this wicked and corrupted race in fact those genie gods did not only corrupt humans but also animals of the planet earth as the bible book of genesis reveals and god looked on the earth and behold it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way on the earth then the flood came upon them that cleaned this corrupted flesh from the earth and made it a clean abode for the genuine human beings did they come back to egypt after deluge to establish their rule on earth of course yes the details given by manetho reveal that the gods of ancient egypt were actually from the army of the jinn not giants of the bible who were assigned to shuttle between earth and heavens for different tasks and the azazil was their chief commander that means the ancient egyptian gods are the part of the satan's progeny that has been given long life and the satan himself has life span till the fixed time before the day of judgment there are many authentic islamic narrations that reveal and prove that satan and his clan originated from the planet earth islamic scholar ibn ishaq stated in his landmark book al mubtada Ibn Jarir and Ibn Al-Ambari narrated from Ibn Abbas that Iblis the Satan was among the angels before committing arrogance and his name was Azazil and he lived on earth. Other prominent scholars like Imam Ibn Jarir and Ibn Abi Hatim narrated from Said bin Al-Musayyab that Iblis the Satan was the chief of angels of the first heaven, heaven of the planet earth. Ibn Munzar has narrated from Ibn Abbas that Iblis the Satan was very respectable among the angels and had a big army. He was also the ruler of the first heaven and the planet earth. Ibn Qasir narrated in his exegesis of the Holy Quran that Muhammad bin Ishaq reported that Ibn Abbas said before he undertook the path of sin, Iblis was with the angels and was called Azazil. he was among the residents of the planet earth and was one of the most active worshipers and knowledgeable persons among the angels this fact caused him to be arrogant iblis was from a genus called the jinn the bible declares satan the deceiver of the world and the great dragon was thrown down that ancient serpent who is called the devil and satan the deceiver of the whole world he was thrown down to the earth and his angels were thrown down with him revelation 12 9 to 10 satan has sworn to lead mankind astray there is a dialogue between god and satan in the seventh surah of the holy quran iblis satan said because you have sent me astray Surely I will sit in wait against them human beings on your straight path then I will come to them from before them and behind them from their right and from their left and you will not find most of them as thankful ones Allah said to Iblis Satan get out from this paradise disgraced and expelled whoever of them from mankind will follow you then surely i will fill hell with you all surah 7:16 to 18 civilizations born and develop and eventually become extinct but the satan with his evil counsel of false genie gods is here to hunt human kind to enslave it as satan has sworn to do it from the very beginning of the humanity 
and it will last till the chosen time of God Almighty.